There's certain players that the media and the league want to push. They just fit the shoe. They're great for the league. They're great for selling product. They're great for drawing in viewers to games. Obviously, Derek White is not one of those players. When ESPN had 150 quote-unquote basketball analysts vote and create a list of the top 100 players in the league, they left off Derek White, who this season is averaging career highs in every major category, putting up 16.5 points per game, 4 rebounds per game, 5.1 assists per game, 1.3 steals per game, 1.2 blocks per game, shooting 49% from the field and 43% from three. And the crazy thing is that stats really don't do justice for how good this guy is and how he impacts the Boston Celtics. He is basically their glue guy and what holds them together. Now, before the season when ESPN left Derek White off of their top of 100 players, to be honest, most people who don't watch basketball closely probably didn't point an eye. JJ Redick, who does watch a lot of basketball, had this to say. The top 100, okay? Oh, no. The top 100. What people need to understand about the top 100 is that several years ago, they changed how they did the ranking. There's an expert panel of expert panel, an expert panel of 150 uh, basketball people that are asked to rank this top 100. And years ago, they would simply rank the players. Here's my list. Here's my 100 players that is are there in the top 100, right? Several years ago, uh, the, the, they used this, this format now where it's who would you rather have for this upcoming season, player A or player B? And then there's an algorithm and then it spits out a new thing. Here, who would you rather have this player or this player? Um, and so okay. it's not an actual ranking. It's not an actual list. And now with Derek White, not only backing up what JJ Reddick has to say, but really taking it a step further, JJ Reddick has now admitted that he actually needs to apologize because him saying that Derek White being top 50 is actually a slight to Derek White. He's better than that. Of these 150 people who claim to be basketball experts, how is Derek White not in the top 100? How is that possible? He's a, he's a top 50 player. And that's probably true. Listen to what Boston Celtics head coach Joe Mazzulla had to say about Derek White's impact and how he should be an all-star of the season. All right, first we got to talk about Derek because he's shooting like an all-star right now. It's like he's, he's, he's had a good year. He's an all-star. He's been he's having a good year, but lately it's just he's been on another level. What are you seeing out of him as far as like the shot selection? Like some of these shots are kind of like a little bit out of what he usually does. And what kind of freedom is he playing with right now? Freedom, confidence, and empowerment from his teammates. And so you know you take a look at uh, a lot of the times um, when we want to settle the team down or we want to get to you know really good execution, we go to Derek White pick and rolls and. Uh, sometimes it's with Jason, sometimes it's with Jalen, sometimes it's with KP only. Tonight it was KP only to attack the matchup, and uh, he did a great job making the play. So his teammates are empowering him. He's playing with a lot of confidence, and, um, you know, it's, it's one of the reasons why we feel so comfortable with him at the point is because of what he can do. It comes as no shock that only the people close to Derek White can see the work every day are the ones that believe in him because his story since the jump has really been one of the all-time underdog stories we've ever seen. He came into high school standing at five foot six and 90 pounds, but by his senior year, he was able to put up 17 points, four boards, three assists, and two steals, which earned him some respect, but no scholarship offers from any four-year institutions. At the time of his graduation, he was barely six feet tall. The only head coach at a four-year school that took interest in Derek White was Jeff Culver, the head coach at the Denver campus of Johnson and Wales University, a non-scholarship NAIA member better known for its culinary program. But by the time Derek White was going to make his decision on where he was going to go to college, this same coach was now at Division II school, UCCS, 
which is University of Colorado, Colorado Springs, and he offered Derek White basically just a room and a board stipend for his freshman season. Coach Culver was not really expecting White to be a starter, but things changed as a late growth spurt had White reach six foot five. He became a star for this team and in his junior year put up 25.7 boards and 5.2 assists per game. That following season, White transferred to Division I Colorado to play for Tad Boyle in the Pac-12 Conference, really one of the top college leagues in the entire country. He had to sit out the entire 15-16 season due to NCAA rules. But in his one season playing for Colorado, he put up 18 points per game, four rebounds, and four assists, and was named first team all Pac-12 and a member of the five-man all-defensive team. All of this was enough for Derek White to become a first-round draft pick as he was selected by the San Antonio Spurs with the 29th overall pick in the 2017 draft. His talent was on display early in his career. We didn't see much of Derek White his rookie season. He only played eight minutes a game. But in his second season, he played nearly 26 minutes per game, putting up around 10 points, four boards, and four assists. And the basketball world was really able to see how he could impact the game in multiple ways. From then on, he continued to excel all the way up to the 2020-2021 season, where for that time, he was putting up a career high 15.4 points per game, 3.5 assists, and three boards, playing 30 minutes a night for the San Antonio Spurs. This added a lot of value to Derek White, obviously, and then the following season, he was traded to the Boston Celtics, for Josh Richardson and Romeo Langford and a top four protected 2022 first round pick. And if you remember, this was the season that the Boston Celtics made a finals run and lost to the Warriors, but there were multiple points in that playoff run where Derek White and his ability to impact playoff winning was very evident. In White's 2022-2023 campaign, he put up 12.4 points per game, 4 assists, and 3.6 rebounds. But this season, the following season, he has career highs across the board, over 16, 4, and 5. And it's worth noting because before the season, like I mentioned, ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports, did not have this man as a top 100 player in the entire league. And here he is really an instrumental piece of a team with the best record in the NBA. So there's probably a case that he's above a top 40 player. To give further context, Derek White is shooting a true shooting percentage of 66% this season behind only James Harden, which is the second highest for a guard this season. Yes, that's above Stephen Curry, who is fifth at 65.2. Also in this 10 game stretch where Boston is eight and two, Derek White is putting up 20 points per game on 53.1, 48.1, and 92.9 shooting splits and also 4.3 rebounds per game, 5.2 assists per game with only 1.4 turnovers per game. And on the defensive end, he's putting up 1.6 steals per game, 1.6 blocks per game. He's basically doing everything for this team that's winning the most games in the league right now. That is a solid all-star case, if we're being real. What do you guys think about Garrick White and his story and his ascension to, I think it's fair to say, stardom at this point if we're going to talk about how a player actually impacts a game and not really just talk about the players that put up 35 and 18 and do a pick and roll every time down the floor. This man is able to do basically everything on the floor. He just doesn't have massive usage but he's able to impact the game in many different ways so 
what do you guys think of Derek White? And should he actually be considered this year for All-Star?